Welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by TheVirtualInstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com, and welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, the greatest live broadcast in all of YouTube. I'd like to welcome all of you, no matter where you are around the world watching this live with us. Should be a fun hour. Uh, and uh, tonight, Ashley's going to be doing the drawing. Tonight is our final drawing episode of this season, season 10. And this season has been all about creativity. And we're going to take creativity to the extreme tonight uh, with Ashley's prompt, which is what's the point. And if you were with us last week, you know that that means that Ashley's going to have to create a drawing using one point, two point or three point perspective. And if you don't know what that is, that's OK. You're going to learn some things tonight. Uh, Ashley, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great tonight, Matt. Thanks for asking. I hope you guys are doing great out there as well. Uh, yeah, tonight we're working without a reference because it's all about creativity. So I hope you've got your pencil sharpened and your ruler and you're ready to go. Absolutely. So you are going to need to have a ruler. You're going to need to have a pencil and an eraser is probably going to be something that you need to. And while you're getting that stuff together, I'll remind you that this is live on YouTube. Um, and that means that you can uh, use the chat box to ask questions or post comments. If you do have a question or comment that's directed at Ashley or myself, put it in all capital letters so I can see it a little bit easier um, amongst all the other comments. I won't take it that you're yelling at me. Uh, that'll just help me see it a little bit easy. Um, also, if you haven't uh, done so yet and you like this kind of thing here, I would encourage you to subscribe to the channel. And if you like the video tonight, make sure that you give it a like. And as always, your comments underneath this video are welcome as well. Now, if you're watching the live version of this, all of your comments are going in the chat box and I can't wait to read those as well. Also, if you want to uh, take your drawing and painting skills to another level, Check out the virtualinstructor.com and our membership program over there, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of subject matter and media. Pretty much every media and subject matter you can imagine is covered there. Uh, there's also weekly live lessons. So after we're done here tonight with getting sketchy, we're gonna head over to the virtualinstructor.com and I'm gonna be starting a brand new series working with watercolor pencils. We're gonna be drawing slash painting an orangutan. I can't wait to get into that one. Um, and all of our live lessons are recorded and they go all the way back to 2000. And 12. So all of that is included in the membership program, as well as weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute and a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. If you're interested in the membership program, there's a link in the description below. Everyone starts out with a week-long trial for free, so you can you can poke around in there and see if the program is right for you. And I would encourage you to do so. Also, if you want to just check out three of our course videos and eBooks for free, there's a link in the description below this video for that as well. Um, Ashley, are you ready to go? You yeah, I your... think so. Yep. Um, but uh, just checking out, getting kind of getting set up. We're going to look at our different erasers and some pencils, and um, I think that's it. Let's switch over. All right, we'll go ahead and switch over to the main camera. There we are. So we're all set up now with the materials we're going to need. I've got three erasers out because we do a lot of erasing when we work with linear perspective because we're going to draw lines well beyond uh, where they uh, where they really feel like they belong and then have to kind of clean up our page as we go. So tonight's going to be pretty different. Working without a reference, um, we won't really have a target. So we're just going to kind of work with the concepts of linear perspective until the clock runs out. Um, I plan to do a little bit of shading, but this lesson is really not about shading. It's about working with one point and two point perspective. I really want to showcase that you can use those two perspective systems together. They're the same system as long as we have one consistency. And that consistency is going to be our eye level. So the first thing we'll do is establish where our eye level is on the page. So I, I do have a an electric eraser for some precision erasing into little corners if we need it. I have a kneaded eraser. Um, it's just real soft and gentle on the paper, so I'll probably use that. And if I have to, I might break out a little bit of uh, pink pearl, pink pearl like eraser, a rubber eraser, uh, just for a little more, a uh, little bit more horsepower, I would say. Now, um, the pencil I'm going to start with, or plan to start with, is an F pencil which is a little bit lighter than a number two pencil or an HB pencil. Hopefully that'll show up well on the feed. Um, we'll darken some lines as we go, as we determine what we're going to keep and what we're going to erase. 
And so when we determine we're going to keep lines, I'll probably switch over to this little shorty here and HB pencil. I don't want to really go any darker than that um, in case that uh, in case I want to make some more erasers and add some forms in that maybe I hadn't planned to add in. So I do have a clear ruler that is for your viewing pleasure. Um, that way you can actually see the, see the drawing through the ruler. You don't need a clear ruler. Um, I do like a ruler that lays flat on the paper. And just so that it's a little bit easier to line my dots up, you know, this is all about what's the point. And we actually have two points already on our paper. Hope you guys can see those. We'll talk about how to lay those out or where to put those in a moment. But uh, a, a ruler that kind of is raised off the table maybe has um, a metal edge in it or has a foam backing. Those are great rulers, um, but uh, you have to be a little bit careful as to where you start your pencil point. So this one lays completely flat on the paper. Um, it's really, really thin, really flexible and cheap. And that's how I like them because I, br I break them and lose them all the time. So this is a good one. If you've got a clear ruler, uh, I would use it. All right. Awesome. Uh, I guess we can go ahead and start the timer. We're just going to um, begin drawing and see where 45 minute takes us. Uh, oh, actually, real, before real, you do, yeah, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead, Matt. I was just going to say um, there were a couple things I forgot to say <laughs> before we got into it. Right. Uh, one of those things is um, that next week, we are going to have another episode. Oh, Even that's right. Tonight's the last drawing episode. Next week, mm -hmm. we're going to take a look at all the drawings we did this season. We're going to give them a quick critique. And also, we are going to take a look at the prompts that you did not vote on. Great. That was a question I had seen so before. you will see what you missed out on. And there were a couple of prompts that I really wanted to get picked. And uh, when you find out what they are, you probably would want the same thing. But I will reveal those, or we'll reveal those next week. What did we start with? Was so, it 14 or 15 on the uh, the uh, the wheel? It wasn't yeah, a wheel. I think there's closer the to board. 20. There might 20. be 15. Okay. Uh, but well, there's or there's a few that weren't picked that we would definitely have to go into and take a look at. Yeah, I don't even remember what they all were, so it'll yep. be a good review for me. Awesome. <laughs> um, and also, you guys are telling me where you are. And of course, I love that. We've got Atlanta, New York City, Norway. Oregon, Oregon, New York City again, sunny Florida, must be nice. It's mm -hmm. sunny here. I don't know what I'm saying, talking about. Scotland, uh, Clemens, North Carolina, that's pretty close. South Dakota, South Dakota, Massachusetts, Michigan, another Florida, all over the world, all over the place. North Wales, UK, thank you guys for joining us here live. Ireland, Virginia, the list goes on and on. So thank you so much for joining us live. All right. Now we're ready, I think. Now, what were you going to say? Uh, I was going to talk a little bit about eye level. I know that when I was learning linear perspective in school, uh, my teacher told me to draw a line across my page and uh, and label it a horizon line and then put a dot somewhere on that horizon line. At the very end of the broadcast, um, we may have a little bit of time just to, in the corner of our page to illustrate how horizon line works but what what is a little bit more i guess correct more um, useful to talk about is our eye level because your eye level does not have to match to match the horizon we're not always drawing scenery with a deep horizon sometimes the horizon is very close to us and our eye level is actually above that so if you're familiar with linear perspective i'm going to be using the term eye level instead of horizon or horizon line tonight. And since we're going to be working with non-objective forms floating in space, um, that'll be even more appropriate. So uh, just a little bit of a vocabulary there, eye level. All right, that's it. All right. I guess we're ready. Uh, so are you ready, we're ready for, for the timer? A, now, we're ready for a timer. Now, this is, I'm feeling kind of bad because we're going to have the timer up, but this is going to be a, a unique episode because normally we're, we're racing to see if we can c complete the drawing. Right. In a short period Usually of time. we have a target and it's uh, our reference. And in this case, there's, there's going to be a lot of, there's, this is a step-by-step -step process of creating the illusion of space. That's what linear perspective mm -hmm. is. Yes. Uh, using lines and vanishing points. Um, and Ashley's going to explain all that. In fact, I'm that. concerned about going too fast. Right. That's, so, that's Matt, what I'm you thinking. slow me down if this, I need to, because I make <laughs> this, a line and then you make a line. Right. This is going to be one of those. Uh, this is going to be a unique episode where there's so much information that's going to be passed along that I feel bad for having the time for even needing the time. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, but we do need to have a timer because we do have another show after yeah, this. We one. need to know when to stop. Right. So. Um, <laughs> but anyway. So. The end result might not look like a complete finished drawing in this case. That is correct. And I think that it's more important that you guys learn from this. We, there, we have tons of videos on perspective at the Virtual Instructor um, on YouTube in our membership program. 
but this is going to be a refresher for those of you who who have been exposed to linear perspective and it's also going to be something that's very important to know if you've never been exposed to linear perspective and that's kind of how i'm going to approach it matt from like like we're starting from the very beginning okay so. perfect um all right so i'm going to start the timer but let's let let's for this episode let's not let the timer give us stress okay okay so timer started i, I, I need that thanks for the pep talk <laughs> the, the timer has started <laughs> just to keep things in in tradition with getting sketchy live all right so i went ahead i'm, I'm working on the 9 by 12 sheet of paper and i went ahead and laid out two dots halfway up or halfway down the page so the dots are four and a half inches from the bottom or the top edge of the page now with linear perspective you can work with one single dot two dots, or you can use three point perspective. And we're, uh, we're maybe say, we're going to save that maybe for another episode, but tonight we're going to use two point perspective. You can tell, cause I've got two dots, but we're also going to use one point perspective. We can use those two together in the same scene just to add a little bit of variety. And so I'm going to go ahead and put a third dot somewhere here in the middle. And we're really going to think about it as the third dot. So let me go ahead and label these. We're going to call this one a, it's just a little easier to talk about when the dots have names. We could give it human names, but uh, we'll just stick with A and B. And we're mostly going to use A and B, but we're going to use the center dot. I'll just call it the center dot for now because we're going to erase it pretty shortly. Um, just to dive into what linear perspective is, um, I guess, in its most basic form. So the first forms we'll draw is one point perspective. All right, so hopefully you've got your line on your paper and you've got a dot somewhere in the middle. Now, when we draw in one point perspective, the first rule of drawing in one point perspective is to start with a shape. So we're going to start with a series of squares. Now, we're going to make these squares in a really easy way just by using both sides of our ruler so we don't have to do much measuring. Um, and uh, we, and uh, in that way, we'll kind of keep our, our uh, distance between our squares and the size of our squares consistent. So let's begin. My ruler is about a third of the way over from the right edge of the page. And I'm just going to go ahead and make a light line down one side of the ruler. And without moving the ruler, make a light line up the other side of the ruler. These lines don't go all the way to the edge of the page because we don't really need them to. We've got plenty of line here to work with. We're going to use these two lines to become the vertical edges of three boxes. So um, in the same way, I'm going to finish a square that runs uh, that has the eye level running through it uh, just by drawing on both sides of the ruler again. So how big is this box? It's as big as your ruler is wide, and yours could be different from mine. All right, there's our first square, our first shape. First rule of one-point perspective start with a shape. Here we are. Now, um, a lot of us can draw forms well, like cubes, but the key to linear perspective, or not the key, but one of its benefits, is that the shapes that we draw, even if it's the same uh, form, rather, um, as the form is uh, changes its orientation to the vanishing point or the vanishing points, we'll see it from a different perspective, a different angle. So let's go ahead and use our ruler again, and I'm going to lay that ruler on top of the first shape and draw a line. So it really looks like two squares right now. And move my ruler up to the top of that new horizontal line and, uh, and trace the opposite side of my ruler again. Now I'll be doing a little racing and talking so you guys can catch up. So this is going to be box one and this will be box two. And we can go ahead and you don't have to keep up with the erasing, but uh, it'll be a way for me to slow down. So we'll go ahead and disconnect these two squares. I love to draw in linear perspective, so I'm really glad to be able to share this with you. And I don't need any of this extra line here at the top, so we'll go ahead and remove it as well. When we start our first form in two-point perspective, um, we'll learn that the very first rule changes. Instead of starting with a shape, one of our elements of art, um, we'll start with a different element of art. All right, so what we did to, um, to create this box, we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side of our original box, what I'm calling box two, um, below box two. 
All right, so these three squares are going to be all the same size and the same distance apart from one another. Now, during the drawing, if you want to draw some of the forms that I draw and not others, um, that's totally okay. If, uh, if, if I move, move on to two-point perspective and you haven't finished all of your three boxes in one-point perspective, that's all right. You can always go back and finish them, just following the same steps. Linear perspective seems restrictive because there, there are rules, um, but it does allow us to create. It allows us to draw things that don't exist or draw from our imagination, and that's what we're working with tonight. All right, so just going to clean up the bottom of this third box, box number three, and we'll be ready to change these three flat shapes into three-dimensional forms. Same box, different orientation to our eye level. All right. Now, what we want to do is connect some of the corners of these boxes to our center dot. Right now, we're just using one point perspective, so we're not even talking about A and B. I'll go ahead and start that. Um, I like to, just for some ruler skills out there, if you don't draw a lot with rulers, sometimes they can get a little bit, uh, little bit uh, wonky on you. So I like to put my pencil on a spot, either the dot or the corner that I'm drawing to or from, and then put my ruler up against the pencil, and then swing my ruler into a dot. That keeps my ruler on my starting point while I match it up to my finishing point. And I'm going to go ahead and make a light line. Hopefully you guys can see these lines. that goes all the way to the vanishing point. We're going to do that to the top left corner of the bottom box. Yeah, I may have missed this, but did you explain what the vanishing point is? I, I heard you refer to that as the vanishing point. Um, the vanishing point is a, a distant place in space where any form that starts in the foreground would recede until it disappears, until it's so far away, it's out of sight. Perfect. Out of sight. So right now we're just dealing with the one vanishing point in the center. Correct. We'll, we'll get into these here in just a few minutes. So what Ashley's showing you right now is considered one point perspective. Correct. Because there's only one point used. That, that we're using. Even though you see three on here, this is not three point perspective. And that's one thing that I want to kind of uh, illustrate for you guys tonight. So you're creating a drawing that has one point and two point perspective in it in the same image. Exactly. A lot of a lot of my students don't do that, and uh, if they would, it would add a little bit of variety to their variety to their drawings. A little bit of spice. That's right, a little spice. So when we're working with one point perspective, we're working with forms that are facing us that have at least one side or one dimension facing straight at us. Two point perspective is what we use when we take one of these cubes and turn them so that a corner is closer to us. I can't wait to get there but he says she likes your little ruler fix there with the pencil oh yeah it helps i think that's a good it suggestion. helps because they, they want to uh, seesaw or teeter a little bit so pencil on a corner ruler on the pencil and then swing the ruler into your vanishing point kind of like a door swings on a hinge there we go and a lot of lines on here we'll clean them up shortly now um, you'll notice that I didn't draw a line from the bottom right corner of our third box. That's because we're drawing opaque forms, not glass boxes. And so I don't want to draw what we couldn't see on the other side of this, the front of this first box or third box. Um, this one's going to be unique. Uh, if we were to connect either of the right corners to our vanishing point, we would partially draw through the front face of our cube. So we're only going to connect this second box um, to the vanishing point with two lines. The top box, box number one I was calling it, is just like box number three, only that it's above our eye level instead of below. Let's go ahead and connect it up. Now, when you become practiced at linear perspective, you can go super fast. I don't want to leave anybody behind tonight. And I've got one more corner that I can connect to our vanishing point, and then we'll start working with these a little bit to kind of chop them down into actual cubes. That's, our, that's what we're after here, are three cubes that occupy a different height in space. All right. Now, we have front edges to our box that are either vertical or horizontal. For the next step, it's going to be really important that we draw some lines that are parallel 
to either a vertical line or horizontal. So uh, we need to give these lines twins is what I'm trying to say. So we'll go ahead and start with the vertical left edges of our three boxes. Now, it does take a little bit of a guesstimation here. We want to chop these boxes off somewhere. Okay, and if we chop them off further from the original shape, they may feel long like a candy bar, you know, like a longer rectangular prism. If we chop them off too close to the front sides, they may feel um, a little bit thin, not quite like a cube. So let's just move our ruler back and forth until we feel like it's in a place that if we were to draw a line up against the right edge of our ruler, we would be um, drawing a side that would be a square if we could turn that box to face us. Okay, that's kind of what I'm imagining, and I feel like I'm in a pretty good place right now. My ruler feels like it's parallel to these three vertical edges. So I'm going to go ahead and not draw a line all the way through um, everything. I'm going to just draw between the two guidelines that are uh, connected to the left corners of our three boxes. So let's take a look at that. Now, actually, if one, if somebody wanted to, they could make the top box a little bit longer or visually longer by placing that line a little bit further, further down. out. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. If you wanted something that was more of the proportions of like a trunk, you know, think about like an old steamer trunk or something like that, you would, you would bring this line further out. So that has to do with your proportion and your, and your, the forms that you're trying to create. All right. These are starting to look a little bit like cubes. In fact, we don't need some of these lines anymore. It's okay if you don't erase them, but I'm going to go ahead and erase some of them, which will slow me down a little bit. I don't want to go too slow. Okay, Buddy has a good question. All right. Um, Ashley, could you use these boxes as guidance for a bird's view sketch, like you're flying over a city? Um, yeah, you actually could. I mean, these, these boxes could go all the way down to like a ground and become the top of skyscrapers. Right. You might have been imagining that, especially with this one you can see where the lines are still connected. We could chop this thing off way down here. Put a street down Put there. a little road down there. Yeah. There we go. Uh, and this is and, why and now, it's so and, important. And now it's, a, now it's a tall building, and we're looking straight down at the ground. And that's why it's so important that you're referring to this as the eye line instead of the horizon line. That's true, Even though too. when right. we talk about linear perspective, we refer to it as the horizon line. Often. It's, it's really not the line that divides the, the sky from the ground. It's really the line that divides your eye line or so, your line of sight. That's right, Matt. I feel like saying eye level kind of uh, is, uh, can be more accurate. It applies all the time. Horizon line applies sometimes, depending right. on your drawing. Yeah. All right. Now, um, in order to finish the top box, box number one and box number three, we have to do something that's a little bit challenging. We have to draw a line that is horizontal. We can't use the vanishing point to help us. A line that is parallel to the front top edge of box three and the front bottom edge of box number one. Now, I'm going to draw this wrong first. Sometimes it's helpful to see that. A lot of my students will make their first attempt to draw a line straight across here. I'll go ahead and put some dots across there. And what they do is they start drawing sideways and then they do this. And they make a line that wants to intersect this diagonal here and make a 90 degree angle out of it. Their brain is telling them it should be a 90 degree angle. Okay, so you have to fight against that um, compulsion if it starts to happen to you and just draw it a second time. You use your ruler to help you, you know, bring the ruler down in this case, keeping it parallel to your eye line, parallel to the front edge, and right on this corner that we created the top left back corner of our box number three, and I'll go straight across. Boom. All right, so we have our first cube, our first completed cube, and it happens to be number three. Here we are. And Buddy's asking, if you like to draw perfect square cubes, how do you know where to draw the vertical lines? You just kind of... Actually, um, the, you know, these two are not hard, they, as long as they're the same distance away as the horizontal lines. As far as where this one goes, it just takes a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of practice you know if, if you draw up this line too close to the original shape it hopefully won't feel like a cube it'll feel thin like a door and if you draw it further away hopefully it won't feel like a cube so that takes a little can be a little bit of uh, uh, you might have to use a little bit of what's the word I'm looking for trial and error you might have to draw that line a couple of times moving it back and forth until it seems like you've drawn 
a cube. That's where the art part comes in. Yeah, right. It's uh, the ruler doesn't do it all, but and the vanishing points and the rules don't do it all, but they do help. So we're going to do the same thing underneath this box. We need to make sure that the ruler feels like it's about the same distance away from our the bottom edge of our box, parallel to the bottom edge of this box, and draw over to create the bottom back right corner. There we go. So when the when we can see when the square or the cube is above the horizon line, we see the bottom and the side. Right. When it's on the horizon line, we only see the side. Without and this vanishing point, I could draw a cube, but uh -huh. if I drew three of them, they would probably all look exactly the same. Each one of these is different because we're either looking straight at it, down at it, or above it. Right. And the one below the horizon line, we see the top and the side. Exactly. So this one's less satisfying. You know, we can only see two sides of it, um, but that's how we see buildings all the time. You know, we can't see the bottom because they're on the ground and the top is, unless you're a giant, the top is over our heads. So, but these are more satisfying to look at because we can see the three dimensions, you know, the see three sides. All right. Now we're going to come back to these. We're actually going to um, take a corner out of one of these and kind of explode it out a little bit just to be, be a little bit more creative. But uh, we'll leave these one point perspective boxes here on the right side of our page. And uh, we're going to forget. Well, I'm going to leave this guy here because we're going to need him for our exploded view of a corner. But uh, we're, we're still not going to give this first dot a name. And we're going to start working with vanishing point A and vanishing point B and, uh, and draw a not necessarily a cube, but some sort of rectangular prism that's pretty big over here and then start removing parts from it as well. All right, don't worry, we're, we're gonna draw mostly boxes tonight, um, but we'll draw something a little bit, uh, we'll draw another form as well, I promise. All right, so thinking about you know the breadth of our page, maybe, uh, well, I'll tell you what, let's just, let's use our ruler, because we do have kind of a midpoint, and let's put a, a, a spot about two inches away from the center. We'll just use that dot to represent our center. And at this place, uh, at this uh, spot on our page, it's a little bit more than a third of the way over from the left edge of our page. We're going to draw a vertical line. Try to get it as vertical as you can. If it's not perfect, that's okay. And I'm going to draw my, I'm going to go ahead and just make this Go ahead. It doesn't matter if your boxes are the same size as mine or if they're in exactly the same place. That's part of the reason I decided to draw um, a non-objective picture tonight so that if your parts don't land exactly where my parts are, your drawing will still make sense. That's why we're not drawing a castle, which was my first inclination. All right, so I've gone ahead and drawn a four inch long line. Two inches is above the eye level and two inches is below the eye level. And so the, the big takeaway right here is that when drawing with one dot, we start with a shape. We started with squares. We didn't have to, but we chose squares. When drawing in two point perspective, very often we start with a line, not a shape, just a line. All right. Okay. Moving on. I hope I'm not moving too fast for you. No, I think you're moving at a good pace. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and uh, like we connected some corners of our first shapes to vanish to the um, to the lonely vanishing point in the center of our page. We're going to connect both the top and the bottom of our line to both vanishing point A and vanishing point B. So it's going to look like two big triangles. And I'll go ahead and tell you, um, with vanishing point A being on the left side of the page, just like our our tall line, uh, we can draw all the way to that. And, you know, it doesn't bump into anything. It doesn't get in the way. But when I connect the vanishing points to the top and bottom of this line, um, f vanishing point B on the right side of the page, uh, we may run into our boxes occasionally. Here I am just slightly covering up a corner. You can draw all the way there. You can draw through it. You can draw part way there, skip over the box and continue. Or you can just draw towards vanishing point B and kind of stop when you get near the middle of the page. All right, so I hope visually you see that this is sort of an applied line. It is definitely connected to vanishing point B. Um, if not visually, it's implied. All right. When drawn in vanishing, um, with, uh, van when two vanishing points, and we're drawing rectangular prisms like, like squares or cubes, like that kind of a thing. Your lines can only do three things. They can be straight up and down. They can go to vanishing point A, or they can go to vanishing point B. That's it. So if you get stuck, if you're not sure what to do, try all three options. That's how we troubleshoot in two-point perspective. 
I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the top of our vertical line that we did to the bottom. We'll connect it to vanishing point A. And then we'll draw to or at least towards vanishing point B. And for this one, I'll go ahead and draw it mostly all the way there. So we're going to have a lot of extra lines and eraser marks on here. That's totally okay. Now, a lot of times I'll create a drawing in two-point or one-point perspective and then transfer it to a clean piece of paper after I've done all my erasers and then continue with shading. All right, because we do get a lot of stray marks. All right. Now, when we completed our boxes in one-point perspective, we gave some of these front edges twins. You know, the vertical edge needed a twin on the back side, a vertical line that kind of was parallel to the front edge. That's what we need to do here. This is going to be the, f the forward corner of a larger box. We're going to chop it off here, or we're going to chop it off here. Maybe you can already see the box in there a little bit. All right. So... We're going to go ahead and take our ruler, and my ruler is probably the standard, like, one and a quarter inches wide. I'm going to bring it out from the original vertical line of this form just a little bit, maybe a half of an inch away from it, and go ahead and make a mark along the left edge. So, again, these are non-objective forms. Yours don't have to be exactly like mine to be correct, but if you're interested, um, these two lines, these two vertical lines are one and three quarters inches apart. You don't have to be. It doesn't have to be exact. All right. Okay, we got a couple of good questions Okay, here. great. First, uh, Buddy asked, what if the landscape goes up, down, or curve? So I'm thinking, she's thinking of like hills and valleys yeah. and things. That's a great you question. Need more than two vanishing points. Well, if you only need more than two vanishing points if you're... From your perspective, you're looking down or you're looking up. And right, that's so when that'd be th three point. Right, that's when you need the third point, and that's three point perspective. But I'm going to make a little illustration up here at the very end of the show um, because we live in kind of a hilly area, mm -hmm. and a lot of times the horizon is close, pretty close to us, and our vanishing points don't actually go on the horizon. For example, you know, I'm five feet eight and a quarter inches tall. So my eye level is about five feet, four inches off the ground. And if the horizon's not very far away from me, then my eye level needs to, it needs to show um, that the, you know, if there were a vanishing point, it would be about five feet off the ground, not on the ground. And sometimes the horizon line is hidden by hills and or, buildings. Or buildings yeah. and cars, things like that, if you're doing an urban scene. All right. And Susan asked... Um, our point question, are points A and B always at the end of our surface? And that's a no. really good question because no. the answer is no. No. Um, in fact, uh, point A could be here. We could draw two-point perspective over here and use that same point to draw in one-point perspective on this side. And there are some paintings like that in art history. Or, Linear or, yeah. perspective can get um, pretty uh, variable. Okay, so we're, we're working with some, uh, with some simplifications tonight just by having spread these out evenly or put our uh, eye line right in the middle. I really like to work with the eye line a little bit above the middle or below the middle, but I wanted to make sure I had plenty of room both above and below the eye level to work with tonight. So those are great questions, and I would encourage you, if this is new to you, after tonight's lesson, start experimenting a little bit. All right? And now, I will tell you, you... Very often, you want your vanishing points outside of your drawing. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That yeah. typically is the case. I mean, if I, if I get too close to this uh, vanishing point, we can't see anything. Whatever we're drawing is so far away, it's about to disappear. So often, the vanishing points will be several inches. Sometimes we actually um, tape an extra piece of paper onto our artwork in my classroom. It's like a wing that we can open up and the vanishing point is 12 or 14 inches away from our actual drawing. That way we can draw, um, whether it's buildings or cars or trains, we can draw all the way to the edge of the page and our imagery goes off the page before it disappears. So you really should think about sort of this as the edge of our drawing. In fact, I'll, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make a mark there. I'll just go ahead and make a vertical line it's bold. And we'll think about this as the edge of our drawing. And now vanishing point A is outside of the edge of our drawing. All right. It's a great question. And, and a couple of people have commented on this and they put it in capital letters and I haven't read it. So I'm going to read this. Okay. It says the perspective lessons in the, the 25 days to better drawings course is amazing or are amazing. Um, and that is a course that's part of the membership program. Um, and the course is called 25 days to better drawings. And we do cover one point, two point, and three point perspective in depth in that course. 
Um, so three thank you guys for you guys. Three points, that out. very exciting. So you should check that out. Yeah, three points the most challenging. In fact, three, it's it's really two point perspective with one dot that causes all these vertical lines to lean a little bit. That's all. Okay. So if you can if you can get pretty good at two point perspective, which is what we're starting now, um, then you'll be ready for three point perspective. Because a lot of the rules sort of stay the same. And Peter, I see your comment. I'm just going to say thank you. Thank you. Because uh, I just talked about that. Margaret says, would like to learn what some of those examples of unusual vanishing points are. Well, um, so you, could, you can look, take a look at the work of M.C. Escher. And you'll start to find them there. He was a master of perspective. And he even made one point perspective super exciting. M.C. Escher. And he got he drew parabolas using vanishing points, all kinds of stuff. And I want to stress that we can draw round things. You know, we can draw arches and circles using these vanishing points to help us. Maybe we'll get to that. I, I, I doubt it, um, but uh, that's probably a lesson for another night. We could do a perspective drawing where everything was round, just to kind of show how how you how you go beyond these uh, flatter shapes. Yeah, you can just cut those things right out of those. Yeah, uh, those I, I, I might try to do one real fast at the end. Forms, not there. necessarily to follow along, but just to observe. All right, so we've got uh, we've got three boxes of one point perspective, one box in two point perspective. Uh, now let's start having fun with these things a little bit. Let's break this one up. Let's make it two boxes. Using my ruler, I'm going to go ahead and uh, and and line up my ruler parallel to the right vertical edge. I'm about a quarter of an inch away, maybe a little bit more, and I'm going to make another line. Okay, it looks like a stripe. Looks like a shoebox turned on its side. And a similar distance away from this uh, center edge, maybe slightly more, and when I say slight, I mean like one or two millimeters more, I'll go ahead and make another vertical line. There we are. If we erase um, the, sh the segment between what look like two thin stripes on this, uh, the right side of this box, we'll have broken this one box into two, or almost broken into two. Got a little something to add. So a lot of times, in uh, we, we can draw anything, pretty much anything, in two-point perspective or one-point perspective. A lot of times it starts as a box, and then like a sculptor starts with a block of stone, we start chipping away at it, start knocking pieces off or rounding them up um, or, you know, whatever. Um, we start removing sections until our, uh, our artwork looks like possibly just more complex in this way, what we're going to do tonight, or more like something we would recognize like a vehicle like a car all right so this is still a complete box it's a skinny box now um, but this one is just a shape it's really just the right side of a box we've got these two dangling corners that we've created let's go ahead and draw from these two corners there would be the the top and bottom left corner of this new shape that we've created it's a trapezoid of sorts let's draw towards vanishing point a until we hit a line and i just want to point this out so people can understand why you decided to go to point a instead of point b oh yeah and when when you're drawing lines of perspective uh back to the vanishing point if they're on the if they're on the left side of the corner then they're going to go to the left vanishing point that's right and if they're on the right side of the corner they're going to go to the right vanishing point now remember you only had three choices so right. from this corner, we could only draw up and down. We already had a vertical line. Mm -hmm. We could have drawn towards vanishing point B, but look, there was already a line there. So we really only had one choice if we're sticking with our rules that you're, uh, at least for rectangular prisms, that the lines are vertical or go to A or B. So if you get confused, if you're looking at a corner like this and you're not sure what to do, just imagine doing all three. And eventually, pretty soon, pretty fast, you're going to run into the correct option. And it'll start to become... Uh, automatic. There we go. Now we've got two thin boxes that are standing vertically next to one another. Broke our two into one. Nice. Nice. All right, let's see. Um, I want to go, I, I do want to draw some prisms tonight, or some uh, pyramids. We're going to do that, but uh, let's go ahead and open this up like a window. All right. Let's make it ho a hollow space in this one so that we can see through it. I'm going to go ahead and draw um, a some four lines on here. Two of them will 
relate to vanishing point A, like Matt said, while we're working on the left side of a form, we'll draw towards the vanishing point on the left. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and start with a vertical. So again, I'm about the same distance away from this, this center corner of our original box on the left as I was on the right uh, when we started to split it up from, uh, from the new box. But don't draw to the very top and bottom. This time, stop a little short, okay, because we're going to change directions here. We're drawing a window. Now, I'm going to go ahead and think about this distance. How, how big is that gap, right? How big is that gap? Um, this side of my box is further away. So to make the gap seem like it's the same, if we add a line over here that is to the right of our left edge, it actually needs to be a little bit closer to that edge um, then the same line would be here because the entire form is shrinking all right just due to um, depth you know depth due to space all right and I'll go ahead and put a vertical line through here not all the way to the very edge again because we're making a a border that's concentric sort of to the uh, to the outer perimeters of that side maybe you can see the window starting to happen and I'm going to use the vanishing point a now to connect these two lines together. One of these lines may be too long or too short, and we'll just have to kind of clean up the, those corners after we get there. All right, so I'm gonna put my pencil down. We'll start with the top of our, um, one of our newest verticals, and put our ruler up against our pencil, and then swing that ruler into a vanishing point, and draw a line towards vanishing point A until you get to the vertical line that's on the, further to the left of that side. There we go. I want to think about this gap here, you know, how big of that space is, and make sure I'm staying away from the bottom edge and with a, you know, kind of a similar gap, and uh, do the same thing to the bottom of, to create a shape on this side as we did to the top. Draw from that point, from the bottom of that line, towards vanishing point A until we get to that second vertical line that we drew on this side. There we go. So now we've put a, basically a square or a rectangle, just a flat shape on the left side of this skinny box. Still not a window. Still doesn't feel like an open or hollow or empty space. All right. Now we've got some new corners. So far, We've only drawn from, from, you know, corners out towards the vanishing point. You know, when we were working on these boxes, we didn't want them to look glass. So I told you, don't draw from a corner that would cause you to draw through your original shape. But now that we're going to create an empty space, we're going to do just that. If you think of this trapezoid as a shape, we're going to draw some little lines on the inside of it in order to start to hollow it out, uh, to create a, to create a, a void. So um, we're going to use the corners here on the left of our trapezoid, and we're going to make some short lines, some lines that are only about as long as we feel like this form is deep or wide, deep and wide. And, uh, and we're going to use vanishing point B instead. Okay, so we're really going to be creating a little wall in here, an interior wall that is the right, that is going to be a right side. So we'll use the vanishing point on the right. In this case, it's B. You know, when you said deep and wide, I wonder how many people thought there's a fountain flowing. I, yeah, I know. That's what I heard in my head, too. <laughs> that's what I heard. All right, there we go. Now, it's little. Okay, it almost looks like a horizontal line, but it's not. It, it, it represents a horizontal line, but because it is uh, below our eye level, it's, this line is moving uphill towards vanishing point B. Do the same thing to this corner, all right, the top left corner of our newer trapezoid shape. That corner, though, is above our imaginary eye level or imaginary horizon line. So we're going to line that corner up with vanishing point B. And in this case, uh, the line will go downhill towards vanishing point B. You can draw it all the way there, but you'll have a lot of erasing to do. Okay, so... Gradually, the more comfortable you become with linear perspective, um, the more you only draw as much line as is necessary just to cut down on erasing. But when we started our, our, uh, started our program, 
we um, we're drawing lines all the way to a vanishing point. All right. Now um, we need to finish this shape off or the side, the right side. We'll call this like a gosh, a, uh, the left, the left form of a frame. Let's start calling this box a frame because it's kind of like a picture frame. And I'm just going to connect the tip of those two lines with a vertical line. And you'll start to hopefully see it as three dimensional. There we go. Something's missing. You're right about that. We're going to have to engage with vanishing point A again. We've got two dangling corners here and here. So let's address those. From both of these corners, there's already a vertical line. From both of these corners, there's a line that relates to vanishing point B. It doesn't go to it. It actually goes from it, but it's still in line with vanishing point B. It's moving away from B. We have not addressed vanishing point A from either of these new corners. So I think that's the answer. So I'll go ahead, and this is a little different. I'm going to put my vanishing my pencil on that corner and the ruler up against the pencil and vanishing point A. But instead of drawing to vanishing point A, we're going to draw away from vanishing point A. Okay, so we can really use these dots in both directions. We can draw towards them or away from them, but these lines are still... Um, drawn in relation to a vanishing point. Okay, now the top ma makes sense now. Okay, let's go ahead and do that to the bottom horizontal bar of our frame. Make it make, make, it make sense. There we go. All right, and it feels like a void. Now, should we see through here? Should we see part of this box on the other side? Probably. So if you want to think about how wide this entire box is, mine is... 54 millimeters. This second box that we created is just slightly behind it, slightly far away, farther away. So maybe, maybe 50 millimeters. Maybe this would be a good spot for the left edge of the, uh, the second box that we created, thin box, from the original two-dimensional form that we drew in two-point perspective. There we go. There we go. Hope that makes sense. Now, um, all, of these, uh, all of these different planes would look much more three-dimensional if we address light, right? If we had a light side, a dark side, a mid-tone, maybe the sides that face down towards the ground would be dark. Maybe the, the right sides would be medium. Maybe the left sides would be light if our light were coming from the left. You think maybe we'll have a little bit of time to add a little bit of shade? Yeah, I'd like to do that at least to maybe one of these. Yeah. You know, but I do want to draw something that's not a rectangular prism. So we're going to do that now. We're going to go ahead and draw a pyramid. All right. And then you can start your uh, you can start your historical rendition of the Egyptian pyramids. We'll all do that. Okay, we have a question here. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure if I understand it, but maybe you will if, when I read it out. If you open the window... Mm -hmm. How do you get the right angle and the lengths of the open window, not too large or small? If you open the window, how do you get the right angle and the lengths of the open window? The correct angle in the lengths. I'm not sure if I'm understanding the question. It's so hard to talk about linear perspective if you're not making marks and drawing <laughs> right. and pointing, I, honestly. But I think I was doing some guesstimating. Right, I as think, far as like how, like how long this one is compared to this one. Right, right. But I think mm. I think a lot of that is going to work itself out when you are using the rules. So if you're going to one or the two vanishing points, the places where you guesstimate, it's it's going to be really hard. It's going to be really obvious if you're way far off from that. Okay. Um, I I think that's what or she's asking. If this window were were shifted a little bit and the gap felt bigger at the top, uh, it would look wrong to you, okay? Yeah, it would be and obvious. That, and it would be your indication to start moving your lines, you know, further away from the original corner or closer to the original corner or further from the bottom or closer to the bottom edge. It'll look like it doesn't fit in the center. It'll look un imbalanced. Okay. Is that uh, right? Imbalanced. She said the wings of the window. Maybe she's talking about shutters. Or oh. maybe a way a window opens, like if you were having oh, okay. hinges. Actually, you know, we could use the one point and draw a shutter on here that would be partially open. Yeah, that would. Yeah, that would get a little bit complicated. Yeah, I, I don't even want to do that. I'm not going to do it, but we <laughs> we could. These are great questions, and uh, 
Maybe we'll have to do some more linear perspective. Looks like drawing. she wasn't the only one that made that a window. So, yeah. All right. Well, I've got now. I've got some. Definitely got some lines on here that don't belong. You know what that means? Break out some horsepower here. It's oh, I forgot to, to change my chair. battery. It's still. I've low, got mine's in the drawer there. Low RPMs. I know it looks the same. But this is Matt's. And no, don't you, take mine. Now, if you can hear it, he's got fresh batteries. So, oh, yeah, much better RPMs. <laughs> All right, there we go. Now, um, we've got five minutes. We may go over a little bit, not too much. Let's, we're going we're gonna to break the rules a little bit because that's what art's all about, right? I told you the first step to, uh, to drawing in one-point perspective is to draw a shape. And the first step to drawing in two-point perspective is to start with a vertical line. We're not going to do that. Now we're going to start with the vanishing points themselves. So just watch for a second. We're going to draw a little square down here. We're going to think about this area at the bottom as the ground. And I'm going to draw a little square um, that is offset. It's not going to be right in the center of the page. It's going to be a little bit to the left by making a couple of lines from vanishing point B. Just watch for a moment. And that could go. easily turn into a road. Sure, too. here it could be. Oh, it can turn into anything, man. Anything, yeah. And the sky's the <laughs> limit in perspective. Well, now, the sky's above the horizon. Oh, that's right. It's still there. In linear All perspective. All right, now, um, and we're going to do the same kind of thing from vanishing point A, but we're going to try to space the two lines out from vanishing point A so that it feels like what we've drawn is a flat square on the ground that would be laying flat on the ground. So here's going to be my first line. Now, what I need to do is draw a, a second line in here that's not too far away. This feels like a rectangle to me, you know, longer in this direction, and not too close. This feels like a rectangle to me, but longer in this direction. Okay, so again, you might want to put your. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use my left hand with a pencil. Here we go. I'm a switch hitter. I'm gonna put my pencil on the vanishing point and swing my ruler around until it feels like it's in a place that would make a f a shape feels like it would be a square if we picked it up and tilted it towards ourselves, And I think this is it. This is it for me. Yeah, I drew with my left hand. It wasn't hard. The ruler helped. <laughs> All right. So um, now, you know, we could draw a line straight down from that corner. It would just feel like a square hole in our paper. I love that. It's a really cool illusion. Um, but uh, uh, we're going to draw a pyramid instead. So you can go ahead and clean up. Clean up any edges. Don't take too long. I could stand here and draw for hours, I think, in linear perspective. Uh -huh. And you just you keep could on. stand there. Oh, that's right. You could stand there. Matt has uh, has revealed a secret tonight. <laughs> we are. I am standing up. That's right. We've left the chair behind. He's raised up the drawing table, lifted the cameras. We're elevated tonight. Mm -hmm. It's great. I love drawing standing mm -hmm. up because uh, I haven't done that since really since college. Okay. So we've got our square on the ground, and we're drawing a pyramid that would have a square base, all right? And in order to do so, we need to find the center of this base because the pyramid's point would be directly over the center. So the way I find the center is I uh, just kind of X out between opposite corners, make an X, and where those, uh, those two lines cross, that's the very center. Okay, now in this case, it happens to be Mm, gosh, I want to change this a little bit. Just for illustra illustration purposes, the center happened to be pretty close to being directly over a corner. So uh, yours may be fine. I'm not suggesting you change a thing. But I'm going to go ahead and move uh, one of these line Bs up just so the center of my pyramid isn't directly over um, this bottom corner because that was going to be less exciting. I promise. All right, there we go. All right, so now I'll go ahead and X these X between these corners again, and this is the center point of my base. We can go straight up from that spot as high as we want to and just find a point in space. I'm just going to wiggle my pencil around there. Hopefully you can maybe see I have a tiny little dot there. That's going to be the point of our pyramid. It's, it, it hovers directly over the center of the base. Now all we have to do is draw from that point. We're not using a vanishing point. We're going to draw some lines now that don't go to A or B. So we're starting to, starting to expand, I guess, our, um, breaking our options breaking here, breaking more law. rules, right? And I'm just going to go draw down to the three lowest corners of our base from that 
Imagine that point in space that we identified as being directly over the base. There we go. There we go. Now it's glass, so we're going to have to erase some of that base. There we are. Uh, we're going to have to erase anywhere we've got some overlapping. Overlapping is a good thing. It helps to create space. tells us something's in front, something's behind, and those are spatial terms. And Keith asked uh, what the manufacturer of those electric erasers are. So these are... They're different, aren't they? <laughs> they're the same, they're right. the same thing. They're exactly the same. But they have different... And they've been, company and they've been sold by two different companies. Because we, we both bought these from Amazon, and they are both what are called white label products right that means so, one company makes them and then a brand puts their logo on there and sells them right so they're both great yeah. whatever they they're, are they're exactly wherever, the same thing. wherever they come from some town in china wherever they come from um they're great <laughs> erasers and then somebody just bought them and you know what you could probably scratch that off and print your own name on there you could yeah all right let me make sure i get you the right one all right just make sure i put the right one back in the drawer i took matt's <laughs> no not really all right so now we've got a pyramid that's great now, um, time's up, but I've got to break this pyramid into two and put a little eyeball on it. Can I do that, Matt? Sure. Like the back side of the $1 bill? It would be the Illuminati. Yeah, we, I can't help it. I can't help it. So I just picked a random spot along the forward corner of our pyramid, and I'm going to draw two lines, one to each vanishing point, A and B, from that spot, and then pick a little space above there, you know, above that uh, where I started on that center corner and do the same thing and we're going to erase out a little section so that we have the pyramid from the back of the one dollar bill the one dollar bill united states now of course that pyramid is drawn in one point perspective so you can look at the back of a dollar and you can look at the drawing that we're making tonight and see how this one's more dynamic there we go sweet now, of course, we've got some dangling corners, so we'll clean those up. Um, we're going to draw, um, we already had a line on this side, the right side, created from vanishing point B. It was this one here. So from that dangling corner, we'll draw towards vanishing point A and stop when you hit something. There we go. Creates a little bit of three-dimensionality, a new top on our pyramid. There we are. Do the same thing on the other side. Draw towards vanishing point B your dangling corner on the left and you've got a uh you've got a illuminati eye dun 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 <laughs> disclaimer getting sketchy has no affiliation with the illuminati i hope i don't disappear tonight i hope if anyone disappears i hope it's ashley <laughs> <laughs> all right there's our all seeing eye there we go that's great all right. Well, I guess time's up. Uh, I, d I really wanted to, to knock out a corner of this box and kind of pull it out in space. Well, um, just to I think that maybe do some would, shading. I think, yeah, just maybe on w at least one of them. It okay. would be helpful to see the shading. Uh, let me do one on uh, one of these just because okay. we can see all three of these sides. All right. So if I were going to shade one of these boxes, then I actually like to use the vanishing point to help direct my shading. So even though this is a long form in this way, uh, I'm sorry, a longer shape, horizontally longer. I'm actually going to make strokes. You don't have to, but I like to make strokes that are kind of uh, uh, still relate to the vanishing point. Now, I'll clean these strokes up. Don't worry. I know they're scribbly. We'll fill in the gaps horizontally, but I do want the stroke direction to be dominated um, by the perspective. So this will be our dark side. So in this case, the light source would be coming from above. It's going to come from above, and it could be coming from, um, in this case, it's going to be the top, but also the left. And so we're going to make the front our medium side, our mid-tone. All right, now go ahead and get a little bit darker still. Just kind of bending my strokes a little bit here, there. Um, got to change direction some to get up against our edges and in the corners, but generally my strokes were going towards the vanishing point. So if they show up, they'll add to our feeling, our sense of the three dimensionality of this form. All right. Then, you know, and this is if our light. Let me draw a little incandescent light bulb there. 
if our light is kind of coming from up here. So the very top might be very light, but also the left would be light. And I would imagine that this forward, this front side, the side that's facing us, is going to have to be a mid-tone. So something between um, the, the dark gray of my pencil and white. Now I'm going to shade a little outside of the lines because I, I like to clean it up with my eraser, making sure that I make it all the way to the edges. Now, I if, could, go ahead, Matt. If you want to go deeper with shading and how you can use perspective to dictate the shape and direction of your shading, mm -hmm. there is a lesson on the website on shading using perspective. So several different forms are illustrated with what would happen to the cast shadow, the uh, the shadows, the core shadows on the object according oh, yeah. to perspective. So if you want to go a little deeper, that's you can. more than we can cover here. In, in sure, this is minutes. just an introduction to linear perspective, but uh, hopefully if you haven't used it before, hopefully it whet your appetite a little bit um, to, to go deeper, to learn a little bit more. Yeah, so those shapes already, I mean, those forms already look three-dimensional with just lines, but you can imagine when you add the oh, value yeah. to it, how much they really do pop and become three-dimensional. Now, I would point out the train track. You've probably seen this, Matt, when you were growing up. It was mm -hmm. in our textbooks. This is how we were taught, probably, or at least I was, with this illustration in an art book. And I was taught that the vanishing point here, call it VP, vice president, no vanishing point, and that this line was the horizon. But uh, we live in an area that's hilly, and so the horizon doesn't disappear out into space like way out in the western part, the western deserts of America where, um, you know, where the road just, just disappears against the horizon. So sometimes we see train tracks or roads do something like this. All right, and the vanishing point is actually up here. Okay, so hopefully you can, can understand now why eye level is a little bit better of an expression to describe um, where the vanish, what the vanishing point lies on, as opposed to horizon line, eye level. Still a horizon, but the vanishing point's no longer on it. Okay, so horizon can be correct. Eye level is always correct. Cool. All right. Well, I guess that's going to wrap things up. Um, actually, I, I tell you what, I really wanted to draw another pyramid under here and turn into a diamond we ran out of room ran out of time there we go i did it i did it. i squeezed another <laughs> pyramid on the bottom so it's hard hard to stop hard to stop. you're only limited by your imagination right. even though we're using using a ruler and it seems kind of kind of restrictive and kind of you know with having some rules to follow you're still only limited by the creativity of your imagination all right. Well, very good. I think uh, uh, there's a lot of comments of people really enjoyed learning this. Some of some of the folks, of course, it was the first time learning it. Sure. Um, and some it was a nice refresher in at least one point and two point perspective on a general level. So uh, I think everyone really enjoyed this out of the box. Uh, yeah, that's right. Pun intended. <laughs> um lesson here on getting sketchy because it's not normally what we do here um right this is the first time i think i've ever worked without a reference for you with you guys so uh, this is what some of them's our lessons are like in the classroom june's actually asking a question about the live lesson tonight mm -hmm. and i will address that when we go live uh over at the virtual instructor um it is a larger size paper though um it's larger it's actually 11 and a quarter by 12 and a half. So there you go. But I'll address all the materials and everything we're going to be doing with a live lesson series for the members in uh, just a few minutes here when we go over. Um, all right. Good. Re great for fre refresher on perspective. Thank you uh, so very much. Good. Thank you. All right. Um, I guess that does it here. So, all right. We'll switch back um, over. We'll switch back. Um, guys, thanks for joining us. This was the last drawing episode of Getting Sketchy Season 10, of course. Next week, I'll remind you that we are going to take a look at all the drawings we created this season. I'm going to pick my favorite. Ashley's going to pick his favorite. We're going to talk about the things that we feel like we did well and the things that we wish we would have done differently in that 45 minute time frame. Um, I, even though we're not drawing anything, that, that is a very valuable lesson 
For those of you who are members and are, know about the Members Minute, which is a weekly critique, you already know how valuable it is to learn by looking at artworks and analyzing them. And that's what we're going to be doing very quickly next week. Um, and I'm also going to be revealing those prompts that you guys did not vote on. Yes. And those actually, those prompts are actually going to get put in the trash can and deleted. <laughs> um, I think a couple of people said that uh, it would be um, good to do those for the next season of Getting Sketchy. But uh, as you know, here recently, in the recent seasons, we like to do something a little bit different each season for Getting Sketchy. Yeah. We're not really entire, entirely sure what we're going to be doing for next season, but it'll be different from this season. So this season was all about creativity. Next season will be about something else. Uh, we're going to take a few weeks off like we always do um, between the end of this season. Again, we'll one more episode next week. Um, and then, but we'll be back, of course, um, and I'll continue to post videos on the YouTube channel uh, in between there, you know, just the static videos here uh, and there. So uh, if, I hope you guys enjoyed it tonight. Again, I'll remind you, if you haven't yet, subscribe. And a lot of people have reached out to me and said that they're not notified when we go live um, or when new videos are posted. And that's because you have to click the uh, notification bell. Uh, YouTube used to notify subscribers. Mm -hmm. Now they will only notify you when new videos are live or, or when we go live, if you click on the notification bell. So subscribe, click the notification bell. And if you like this video, give it a like. And of course, I'd love to hear your comments in the comment section below. Um, guys, have a wonderful week. Uh, Ashley, do you have anything else to say to everybody? Uh, I would just say, in your drawings and in life, you have to keep things in perspective. So, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> that one took me a minute. Uh, I was sitting here looking at buttons. I was like, oh, that was a joke. I get, I get it. Very good. Um, all right, uh, guys, have a wonderful week. Uh, we'll see you right here next week. Uh, good night, everybody.